I wear this mask that grins and lies. It's shading my cheeks and silencing my eyes. Why should this world think otherwise in considering my traumas, my tears, and my sighs? The truth is, I am only letting you see me while I wear my mask. I didn't need to become a professional dancer to learn how to wear a costume that was made for me, tailored only to quench the ego's thirst for control. I didn't need to become a professional dancer to learn how to allow others to explore my body, displayed only to sate the ego's hunger for power. And I didn't need to become a professional dancer to learn that when you feel ostracized, rejected, and persecuted, your only requirement is to wear a mask to make all things seem candid. At eight years old, I learned how to be his muse. I was Josephine Baker, and he was my black Picasso. I didn't need to do much for his attention except be young, innocent, and within his reach. Our sessions together were sometimes joined by a third party with his permission only because he wanted to teach me the feeling of control. And in this case, by him, someone older, he was 16, someone stronger and someone smarter. For Snow White, it was an apple. For Sleeping Beauty, it was a needle. But for me, it was sex. Molestation, believe it or not, can be executed with a type of coercion that does not include force nor threats. For example, Max, little man, I see that you're still learning what your body can do, and I'm still learning what my body can do, so how about we learn together? Or, Max, little man, we're only having fun, and I promise I'm not going to hurt you. This all sounded perfect to the eight-year-old Maxwell, who was inquisitive and who also felt loved by someone who adored his femininity compared to the jerks at school and in his Caribbean neighborhood who constantly called him a faggot. When we were alone in his house, he gave me a piggyback ride to his room and we climbed up the ladder to his bed. I was Jane and he was my Tarzan. We wrestled playfully for a few moments until there was silence between us. And that silence was broken when we heard the unzipping of his pants. <sighs> this was the first time I learned how to make all things seem candid. I heard the voice, you know, my inner consciousness telling me this was wrong. And I could hear my mother shutting two of her rules, don't talk to strangers. And if anyone touches you in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, you let me know. But I thought to myself, well, my extended family can't be a stranger, and I think I'm actually enjoying the way he's touching me. We told no one, especially in fear of my mother's reactions. And for years, this mask spoke loudly, telling me, always be kind to someone who loves you. What I experienced at eight years old was not love. It was molestation. His only agenda was to fuel his ego's thirst for control and hunger for power, and I was too scared of losing the affection of someone adoring the attribute, my femininity, that my community deemed an abomination. My last straw with him was when I was 13 years old and he demoted me. I was no longer going to be his muse, but his perpetrator. You see, he threatened to tell my mother that I was coercing him into something that was wrong and making him feel very unsafe. Well, in an instant, I was no longer interested in making all things seem candid. My mask fell off. I no longer heard always be kind to someone who loves you, but what I did hear was tell the truth and set yourself free, Maxwell. And I did. I came clean about my five years of trauma. But after some time passed, my case went cold because he denied everything. Why should you 
think otherwise in considering my traumas, my tears, and my sighs. When the truth is, I am only letting you see me while I wear my mask. When you hide the truth of your feelings behind the toxic expectations of anyone or anything, you are wearing a mask. Wearing a mask is great to keep each other safe from contracting COVID-19, but wearing a mask to protect each other from the truth that will save you will always be our greatest pandemic. The truth that the 16-year-old was protecting me from was that his classroom teacher was also molesting him and forcing upon him the same mask that he was forcing upon me. Making all things seem candid will kill you. Every time you lie to yourself, you confuse your nervous system. You send your body into a flight from the truth and a fight to the lie response. And because you choose to digest that lie, you make yourself ill. Just ask yourself, how many times do you feel sick when you say yes, but you really mean no? Or when you say no, but you really mean yes? Or how about those times when you're too damn scared to say anything at all and you allow someone or something to manipulate your silence into a yes or no that works out for their own convenience? Mm-hmm, you should think otherwise in considering your traumas, your tears, and your sighs. Because the truth is, this world can only see you without you wearing that mask. My experience at 13 years old is no different than the experiences of many students within dance education. Now let's be very clear, we need dance education because dance saves lives. It saved me from potentially taking my own life back in high school when a group of juniors and seniors gay bashed me in the hallway and thereafter made a hate page about me on Facebook. My reality sucked but learning how to move my body in many creative ways helped me to sweat out that trauma. Dance can help us conquer life. Unfortunately, dance can also destroy our lives. Somewhere, there's a freezer stuffed with many, many cold cases because abominable perpetrators in dance education are still refusing to take accountability for the emotional, physical, and verbal abuse that they are inflicting on their victims. In many classrooms, conservatories, and studios, students are ritualizing spiritual suicide because they're encouraged to be authentic in their movement, yet silent in their pain. I still remember the day that my professor maliciously suggested that I become a trans woman because she did not like the way I sat as a man in her class and justified her verbal abuse because a choreographer once referred to her as a whore because he didn't like the way she looked as a dancer. As you can see, there is a long history of many so-called dance educators who do not care to know if the cage bird sings unless the song is to their own tune. Only, and I mean only, healthy educators will consider the students' past experiences, their traumas, their tears, and their sighs to provide them with a quality education that will propel their life's trajectory. Are you that educator? Students are only complimented for doing as they are told, but are ostracized, rejected, and persecuted for speaking up and out against anyone or anything who encourages them to make all things seem candid. We still wear masks because we have yet found the courage to challenge those educators who are still contorting black bodies to resemble white bodies. We have yet found the courage to challenge those tenured professors who are still treating tackling racial equity as a checklist rather than a consciousness. And to those black dance educators, black dance directors, and black dance choreographers who are still failing to see their own embodiment of white supremacy, you are not exempt. Winning a Dance Teacher Magazine Award, yes girl, I'm talking about you. Winning a Bessie Award and any type of recognition never overshadows the trauma you are feeding to your students. We still wear masks 
because we have yet found the courage to challenge those institutions that are still housing sexual predators that only cast the dancers that they enjoy sleeping with to dance on the stages of our favorite New York City theaters. We have yet found the courage to challenge those organizations who are still failing to create scholarships for dancers of color and dancers with special disabilities, yet call on those same dancers to dance for donations of which they will never reap the benefits. Are you our pimps or are you our protectors? When will you stop raping us for our talents? Students, Educators and stakeholders in dance education are still wearing masks because they're so afraid of losing the affection of someone potentially saying, I see you, but I ask. How much is a person really seen if we only choose to see the part of them that does not interfere with our ego's thirst for control and hunger for power? If the dance education industry would actually start to rehearse the healing and inclusivity that they claim to perform, then maybe, just maybe, we can all finally unmask our pain. Because the truth is, we will only see each other without wearing our mask. I am now learning how to live in the space of unmasking my pain, speaking and honoring the truth about how I feel, moment to moment, day by day, and even right now. When you honor your truth, the universe responds by opening the doors for us to evolve into the truth that we are called to be. This year, I get to help my students get closer to owning their truths by helping them to prioritize self-affirmation and self-compassion. And I get to do it as a high school dance director for the New York City Department of Education and as a program director for the Martha Graham School of Contemporary Dance, the oldest school of professional dance in the US. In both roles, I use social and emotional learning to help my students answer one question, do I matter? Many students, and many educators who are also once students do not know that they matter because their own educators did not know that they themselves mattered enough to put love first. Where love is absent, lack is present. A lack of compassion, a lack of respect, and a lack of safety leaves room for injustices to run rampant in classrooms, conservatories, and studios. But oh, when you plant love in your students, Guaranteed, you will reap a harvest of critical conscious thought leaders who will fiercely challenge this world's unhealthy, oppressive, nonsense ideals because love is their lifeline and love is fueled by the power of I am. I am is the answer to do I matter. When we get lost in life's painful stories, I am brings us back into alignment with owning our truths, moment to moment, day by day, and even right now. Many of my students are coming from painful stories, gang violence, sexual abuse, domestic violence, and homelessness. But my students are not defined by their pain. They are defined by the power of their belief. Every morning, my students and I recite our affirmations. Please join me. You clasp your hands together. You place them over your heart. Inhale deeply and exhale freely. I am flowing in alignment with the best that is expected of me. I am celebrating my ability to create the life I desire. I am ready for my miracles to manifest soon. I am focusing on my happiness daily. Now, when my students find themselves in a pickle, do you think they're defining themselves as the problem? Absolutely not. You know why? Because they know I matter, because I am flowing in alignment with the best that is expected of me. I matter because I am celebrating my ability to create the life I desire. I matter because I am ready for my miracles to manifest soon. 
I matter because I am focusing on my happiness daily. My mission is to help you, the students and the educators in dance education, remember that you matter enough to put love first and that you matter enough to rebirth dance education as a brave space for all involved of all colors, shapes, and abilities to build and develop self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and most importantly, responsible decision-making. Because when we build upon our humanity, we will enrich our artistry and can rest assured that dance does save lives. Just the other day, one of my students reminded me to practice what I preach, and y'all know how that goes. <laughs> I, I was standing in the hallway when a student randomly called me a faggot. And I froze on the inside because the narrative of him, the eight-year-old Maxwell, was now telling this 28-year-old Maxwell, you deserved it. One of my dance students overheard, and she pulled off each of her acrylic nails. <laughs> juggled them in her hand, placed them in her pocket, and waited patiently for the student to pass again in the hallway for a good pummeling. Now that's real love. <laughs> I told her, calm down. It's absolutely no big deal. Her reply, Mr. Waterman, you matter. You are one bad bitch, and you don't need to pretend that you're OK with being disrespected. The little boy on the inside of me is thanking her. <sighs> Do keep on this mask to protect yourself from catching COVID-19, but do not keep on this mask to keep catching the bullshit of making all things seem candid. Thank you.